Glitterific. You may not have heard of Glitterific Fine, which is our brand new glitter paint here at Plaid, and we are super excited to share it with you. Um, so let's kind of go over the differences between our existing folk art glitterific and our brand new glitterific find. So if you don't know what glitterific is, it is um, multiple sized particles of glitter that are in a clear base and it brushes on your surface just like paint. So um, if you don't want to use glitter in your craft room because it gets way too messy, then we've got you covered. It is no mess. Um, it is really the best way to use glitter and we love it here at plaid and we hope that you guys love it at home too and that's why we're so excited to talk about glitterific fine which is very similar to glitterific it is still um, those different sized particles of glitter suspended in that clear base except just like the name says the glitter particles are super fine giving it a really beautiful iridescent looking finish. So we're going to be working with both of those products today and I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks on how to use it um, to the best of your ability to make the best glitter projects that are no mess, um, the best glitter projects possible. And before we get too into the class, I want to remind you guys that Jesse is here um, in the chat moderating all of your uh, questions and comments. So if you have any questions she knows all about these awesome products too. So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat and she can answer them herself or I'll uh, relay them over to me and I can answer them in real time for you guys. Hey guys. So let's, yeah. Hey Jesse. <laughs> so let's go over um, all the different supplies that we're gonna be working with in today's class. So in the product or sorry, in the project uh, class description, we had this um, Art Minds chalkboard surface and I just wanted to switch it up a little bit to show you guys all the different ways you can use these products to make a really awesome back to school project. So we have this chalkboard easel which of course is also at Michael's. It's also made by Art Minds. So whatever you're working with today um, it'll be totally fine. And then we also have this uh, really cute and an expensive wooden clipboard frame from Art Minds as well. So you can kind of see the before and after um, how amazing that transformation is. So I'm super excited to show you guys how we did that. Then you're gonna need some scrap of paper. Michael's is the place to buy all of your different um, multimedia, um, or sorry, not multimedia, I always say that, mixed media um, papers for crafting with. So we have some great papers that we've picked out. And then um, our glitterific, of course. I didn't list any specific glitterific colors in the um, project class description because I just wanted you guys to uh, pick out your favorite glitterific to work with and kind of build your own color palettes. And we also talked about bringing to today's class a coordinating folk art acrylic paint color. And I'll tell you guys why. And if you were a little confused about that, I'll explain what that means. So. Right here, we have our beautiful Glitterific Fine Tangerine, which is this beautiful, like peachy, rosy pink color. We just wanted to find an acrylic paint that really matched that color, um, a folk art acrylic. So here we have, see how similar these two are? We just have this similar pink color. And this is gonna lay under this to really make the Glitterific pop. And you don't always need to do that with Glitterific. You don't need to have an underlying base coat color. That's just something that I found that really, really makes the glitter pop. And it also looks beautiful just straight on your surface and kind of giving that iridescent look. But, um, but yeah, I just like the way it looks with a base coat underneath. So we'll do with and without for this class today. Um, so that was what I meant by that. And then of course, you're gonna need your Mod Podge. So that's how we're gonna get our lovely papers down onto our uh, project surfaces. Uh, if you don't know what Mod Podge is, it is the best all-in-one uh, glue and sealer um, decoupage on the market. So uh, we love Mod Podge here at Plaid and I'm excited to use that in our project today. Um, and then you're gonna need some paint brushes, basic stuff you guys probably have at home, paint brushes, scissors, a pencil, um, whatever you're using as your palette for the class. Um, I also suggest you grab some stencil tape or painter's tape or even washi tape to make some clean lines on our project today with our glitterific and our paint. And then you're gonna need some CraftSmart uh, mailbox stencils. So really you can choose whatever font you prefer. And you just want one of these mailbox stencils that has that, that has like four letters that take up each card. That's the size where that works really great on this um, Art Minds surface. 
and it's going to work great on our uh, chalkboard easel that we're going to use in class today. So, so far, any questions, Jess? Not yet. I think everybody's just excited to see the project. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's set this aside. And actually, let's bring this back out. Okay, so we're going to cut this open so we can start working with it. I love that little frame. What'd you say? I love that little frame. There's so many things you can do with that little surface. I know. Think of all the things you could do. If you're going back to school, if you're going to middle school or high school, this would be great to stick in your locker. It would mm. be great for um, a home office at home just to stick little reminders on. It would be great in a bedroom and to put a cute little picture inside. Um, you know, if you're watching this class with back to school in mind, and that's awesome. But if you're watching this class without back to school in mind, hopefully you'll still find a lot of uses for these super cute projects. Okay, so one little tip I wanted to give you guys, we got this really awesome paper pack at Michael's a while ago. And um, if you find a paper in a paper pack and you've used all of that paper um, and you don't necessarily want to go ahead and buy a second paper pack and you can't find it in the individual pieces of paper in um, the paper aisle, then um, sometimes you can make photocopies of them. Um, and sometimes our normal printers at home don't give the best um, uh, don't give the uh, best results when we're just using our regular printer so you can get them done at a printing facility. Um, but that's a little tip I wanted to give you guys because we used um, all of the papers that we uh, wanted to use for this pro project. So we just made a copy of them. Okay, so um, now it's time to measure our paper into these little strips like you see we did for the finished project. So I'll put this right here for reference. So I'll show you guys how we did that. So we're going to flip this over because we're going to make some pencil lines on this and you could totally erase your pencil lines, but it's just uh, one step that we're not even going to have to worry about. So I'm going to flip it over um, and then I'm going to trace. Okay, grab your pencil and we're going to trace along the bottom here. And now we're going to be mindful because we only want to leave a pencil mark where this slat reaches this slat, okay? Because um, there's no opening here, so we can't stick our pencil there to indicate where that strip, um, how tall it needs to be. So we just want to start it right at the top of that strip. Does that make sense? Yeah. And now, that we have um, how tall our strip of paper needs to be. Let me move this stuff up so you can see above the closed captions. Okay, now we are going to use whatever straight edge you have. You can use a ruler, you can use one of your surfaces you're working with, a paper book, and we're gonna use that as our straight edge to connect where these two lines are so that we can just have that really super straight line when we cut it out. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to cut this strip out. And if you have a paper cutter at home, that is totally fine to work with. But if you just have scissors, then that's great too. Okay, let's see how it fits. Perfect. And whenever I like to Mod Podge something like this, to avoid having this raw wood show on my surface, I just like to find another coordinating color in a folk art acrylic paint. And I like to just paint around the edges. We're not gonna worry about getting into the middle because that part obviously is gonna be covered up 
by our paper. I just want to get the sides and the edges where uh, the wood might show. So I just have this blue color that's a pretty close match. And I'm going to put some of that on my palette. Sometimes I'm a messy painter, so I'm going to use this paper plate to uh, catch some of this <laughs> paint that might go on my table. And I'm just using a small flat brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint those sides. And the reason I love folk art acrylic paint so much is because it is so opaque and you get such an awesome coverage on your projects. Okay, and we're just gonna go right up to where this slat meets the other slat. We're not gonna go on to the second one. Okay, great. So you guys don't have to do this at home, but just to save us a little bit of time today, I'm going to hit this with the blow dryer so that we're ready to Mod Podge. Alrighty, so now that our paint is dry, we're going to crack open our Mod Podge. Really crack it open, I guess. I love opening a fresh bottle of Mod Podge. There's nothing better. Love the smell of Mod Podge in the morning. I know, right? <laughs> And here's just another little tip. Whenever I'm working with Mod Podge or even, um, you know, Mod Podge or Glitterific or really even like acrylic paint, I like to just have some baby wipes next to me or like a wet towel or rag if I'm um, not by a sink, just to keep my hands clean. All right, so now I'm gonna use a bigger flat brush and this is what I'm gonna use to apply my Mod Podge down to my surface. And if you've never used Mod Podge before, um, like we said in the beginning, it is a great all-in-one glue and sealer. Um, but you'll notice if you've never used it before, um, it goes on and it has a um, kind of milky white color, but it dries totally clear. So if you were to seal your project with this and you're kind of worried that it's looking a little bit white, don't worry because it'll dry totally clear. And you can kind of see, uh, my paint wasn't totally dry, so that's why it's picking up that paint. But if my paint were dry, then um, obviously we wouldn't be picking up any of that blue color. Okay, we'll rinse our brush and then we are just going to place down our strip of paper. Okay, and I'm just going to use my fingers to smooth that out. If you have some fancy Mod Podge tools at home, like a squeegee or a brayer, then feel free to use those in your project, but you totally don't have to. I just like to use my fingers just to press my paper down and make sure that it's flat and that there are no air bubbles. And uh, you can do that just fine with your fingers. Okay, so there's one slot done. So let's move on to the other one. So like we talked about in the beginning, you do not have to base coat 
your surface before you apply Glitterific to it. But I've just found that when you do, it really allows the Glitterific to pop. So that's what we're gonna do today. And to showcase our brand new Glitterific find, let's use that first. So I'm gonna apply some of my pink to my palette. <coughs> Excuse me. We're gonna grab our flat brush and brush all of it on. So we're not even, we're not just doing the corners and the edges this time. We are applying it to this whole strip of wood. And if you're a little bit nervous about coming into contact with your paper, um, you can always do the base coating beforehand and then do the paper afterwards because you can always, you know, touch up with a different paint and you can't really do that if you've placed your paper down or you can use some stencil tape and uh, tape over that paper once it's dry to avoid uh, getting any, you know, of this paint on top of your paper. Or sometimes I like to use the tip of my brush, the tip, and I like to stand it vertically just to really get into those hard to reach places. If you're struggling to do that, laying your brush down flat. Whatever works best for you. Let's get the sides. Done. So once more, let's hit it with a blow dryer. Okay, now for the fun part, we get to use our Glitterific Fine. So how I'm gonna use this, I'm just gonna apply some of the Glitterific Fine straight onto my palette. And it's thick, okay? It is um, paint, but we are, it's gonna be a lot thicker than the normal acrylic paint we're used to, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my flat brush um, but if you don't want to use your flat brush, if you're having difficulty like getting an even layer or whatever, then I would recommend using a palette knife. So this would work great too, to get a really even coverage of your glitterific on your flat surface. Okay, so we're going to pick up our glitterific and we are just going to go straight on to our pink. Look how beautiful that is. Make sure you give us a tilt. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Um, and if you're struggling with the movement of your glitterific, sometimes, you know, just like regular acrylic paint, just to keep it flowing and moving nicely, I just like to dip my brush in some clean water. Um, and so that my brush gets a little bit wet and then that really helps the movement of your glitterific. So that's a neat little tip as well. So Emma, what is the difference between the classic glitterific and glitterific fine? That's a great question. So our, with our regular glitterific, I can show you guys in a minute, but it has a bunch of different sized particles of glitter that are all sh uh, shining and reflecting the light and it's gorgeous. And then our glitterific fine has, um, you know, different sized particles of glitter as well, but they are much, much smaller and they are super concentrated as well. So you get this really beautiful, like shimmering iridescence. Okay, thanks. Um, a lot of times, you know, we are showing how to use glitterific um, in this kind of base coating way. We're applying a uh, glitterific to a very large area, but um, a lot of people use glitterific as accents in their painting, which is really beautiful. You can really control where your glitter goes, which is a you know huge game changer in glitter crafting. You know, sometimes you just kind of apply the glitter and cross your fingers, but you really don't have to do that with glitterific because it is, you know, it is paint. So you can just brush it on um, however you like in a really controlled way. Quick and easy, you guys. Um, another thing about glitterific too is that when you uh, place your glitterific on a flat surface, it's self-leveling. So if it is looks a little bumpy in the initial application, don't worry, it'll self-level and look totally smooth. And look how beautiful that shimmer is, you guys. So pretty. And then when it dries, you get something like this. That looks awesome. And since you guys were asking, let's use some of our regular glitterific now. Um, and just one thing, a little tip that um, I have found to be useful. I like to place my uh, brushes that I've used glitterific in, in a separate water basin than the brushes that I put my, um, you know, acrylic paint brushes in. Um, just to, you know, if you do get a little bit of glitter inside the bristles of your brush, you don't have to worry about that traveling to your acrylic paint brushes. So I just like to keep those separate. And it does come out of your brush really easily, but it just saves you a little bit of time when you're cleaning your brushes. And if you had that question, the glitter if it comes out of your brush um, super easily with just some with just water, just how you would normally clean your brushes with acrylic paint. Okay, let's get into some chalkboard business. So um, I said we're gonna move on to the glitterific next, but let's actually um, jump around a little bit, break out some of our stencils. I wanna give you guys some tips and tricks if you want to leave yourself an encouraging little note like this one that we did in this chalkboard. Okay, so we talked about using some stencil tape or some painter's tape or some 
washi tape in this class today. So grab that if you have it. That's what we're gonna use to uh, make some really clean lines on our project. So I'm gonna break off a piece. And cover that area. And I just wanna go over here and here. And then I'm going to mirror that line on our bottom so that our corners match. All righty, and then just like we did before, first let me clean and rinse my uh, brush. We are going to break out this turquoise color because we're about to use our uh, tropical, our glitterific tropical, and this is a great undercoat color. I love that color. I do too. Isn't it so pretty? And let's bring our paint all the way down to the leg of our chalkboard too. That'd be cute. Okay, and then now let's use a, our blow dryer on this. And go in with a second coat. Much better. And how are we doing in the comment section, Jess? Doing good. Um, Lindsay said really pretty. And then I asked if anyone has tried glitter, Glitterific before, whether it's the original formula or Glitterific Fine. Um, and Lindsay said no, but they are definitely going to try some. Awesome. Cool. And Lindsay, if you make a project and decide to post it on social media, make sure to hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts. We'd love to see um, all of your creations. So let's hit this with a blow dryer one more time, you guys.
Okay, so we're going to keep our stencil tape on our surface, and now we're going to apply some of our Glitterific Tropical to our palette. And one thing that you want to be mindful of, we just want to be a little quick when we're working close to our stencil tape, um, because we don't want our glitterific to start to dry and create a film so that when we try to remove our tape, it will peel up some of that glitterific. So let's take our tape off. And we get that really clean, beautiful line. That looks so good. Awesome, thanks. Okay, and now we're gonna replicate that onto our other side. That's like the best part of using stencil tape in a project is like the big reveal, getting that mm -hmm. super duper clean line. Oh yeah. Very satisfying. Okay. Look how cute. I love it. And I have this adorable little chalkboard. You can paint this like too if you want, or you can leave it raw wood. Um, so cute. Now let's use our stencils. So for this one, I think we're going to use a monogram to kind of personalize your chalkboard and make it really unique to you. I can never remember the order, Jess, of uh, when you get your name monogrammed. I know it's kind of preference. Some people do it just in the order of your initials. And then some people do it first, last, middle, like your last name goes in the center. Yeah, that's what I thought. So yours would be like E, P, C. But I, again, people always do it differently. Okay. So if you've never used stencils before, um, sometimes you just have to pop out the letters and you just gotta be gentle and make sure you break all those little spots where you can see that the letter is attached to your stencil. Okay, and then this is totally just a preference, 
But whenever I'm working with stencils, I like to cut them down to size a little bit. You can keep them whole and um, you know stencil down, or you can cut them up like how I like to do. So let's do that. And I like to get fairly close to the opening of the stencil. That way it's easy to line up and get um, our spacing correct. So I have my C for my middle initial. Let's get our E for my first initial. and our P for my last initial. Okay, so now whenever I lay out my stencil before I go ahead and you know attach it down or tape it down, whatever I'm doing, I like to find the middle part of my word, in this case, the middle part of my monogram. And I like to place that down in the center first so that I can lay out my spacing from there and go from you know left to right or wherever, however you wanna do it. But I like to get my middle letter centered. And once it's nice and centered, I just want to attach that down somehow, like with some stencil tape. And because, and just make sure sometimes the top and bottom of your stencil is not gonna dictate um, the actual top and bottom of your letter. So we're not even gonna look at where our stencil starts and stops. We're gonna look at where our letter starts and stops to make sure that it is super even. And go ahead and tape that down. And lastly, our P. Make sure that's nice and even. And tape it down. And if you're worried about getting any paint over your stencil, you can go ahead and just place some tape down to just be safe. Sometimes I like to do that too. Get a bigger piece. That way our paint won't go overboard onto our chalkboard. Okay. So now we're gonna use our stencil brush. Um, I like to use stencil brushes on flat surfaces, but on round surfaces, I prefer to use um, a bouncer or a dauber. But since we're using a flat surface today, we're gonna to use the stencil brush. And we're gonna go back into our pink color. And if you've never stenciled before, I'm just gonna give you the quick um, tutorial. So we're going to apply some paint to our stencil brush and the next thing we definitely want to do is we want to offload some of that paint. And what that means is we just want to um, wipe some of that paint off onto a clean surface like your palette or some paper towels. We want to swirl a little bit and dab, dab, dab. And once most of the paint is off of your brush, we're ready to go onto our stencil. And you can see here, there really is barely any paint. There definitely wasn't that, um, you know, the same amount of paint as we started with. We don't want a whole lot of paint because we are planning on going back with more coats of our paint. The risk that we run into if we have too much paint on our brush is that we're gonna get some bleeding in our stencil and our paint is gonna go underneath our stencil onto our surface in areas that we do not want it to. So we just wanna have barely any paint on our brush and then we can go in a um, up and down quick pouncing motion onto our stencil in the areas that we want filled in. All over. 
reapplying paint and offloading as we need it. And um, it's not quite as opaque as I would like it to be just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a blow dryer while my stencils are still on so that I can go ahead and give it a, another coat or two. And let's give our stencil one more coat for good measure. So let's blow dry it again really quick. Perfect, let's see how it turned out. This might be even better than our tape reveal, Jess. Ooh, <laughs> love a good reveal. Me too. Okay, and then you get a perfect little monogram and you can do that to any of your, you can do that on your notebooks and your uh, backpack even if you use multi-surface paint. Um, it's a great way to personalize all of your back to school supplies or your office supplies and um, just make it that much more special. And of course, it's going to get way more special when we add our glitter touches to it. So we're going to stick our stencil brush into our water basin. And I'm going to actually hit it with a blow dryer just one more time so that we can apply some glitter and thick on top. Okay, so let's just do a touch test. Yep, it's dry. So before we actually do apply our glitter and thick, I was getting a little ahead of myself, we need to prime our chalkboard. And if you've never heard of that before, that just means that we are going to get it ready to write on with our chalk. So you need to do um, this step. If you have any brand new chalkboard at home, if you've just painted something with chalkboard paint, this is important to do as well. And I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna prime our surface today. So you just need a plain white piece of chalk and we are going to gently rub it onto all of the areas that we plan on writing on chalk with, okay? And the reason it's good to do this is because um, that way when we try to write on it with chalk later, um, we aren't gonna get left with those permanent marks, okay? Like if we write hello on it, we don't want to be stuck with hello forever. So it's always important to do this step whenever you buy a new chalkboard surface. 
And we're just wanting to do this before we add our glitter to our letters, um, because uh, obviously the glitter is gonna give our project some texture. And we want a smooth surface when we do this. Okay. And now we're just kind of kind of use a you know paper towel or fingers to just rub that chalk away. Okay, and now it's ready to write on. All right, now we can move on to the fun part, applying our glitter. So we are going to use our glitter thick tangerine once again. Um, that's if you can't tell, that's definitely my favorite color of glitter thick fine. And we're just gonna use this cute little round brush. We don't want a super big brush. We want a little bitty baby brush. And we are just going to follow where we placed our stencil and cover our monogram in glitter. Um, so glitter, I think just like acrylic paint is permanent. And while it's wet, you can clean it up with soap and water. If it gets on your surface, just, you know, get a wet cloth and wipe it up really quick. If you get it somewhere you don't want it to be. And glitter, I think, really makes applying glitter to your project super quick, too. In addition to the no mess part. Okay. So there we have it, you guys, our two beautiful projects. Um, before we wrap up the class, Jesse, do we have any more questions? No, I think we're all good, Em. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So once again, I just wanna thank everybody for joining us for this class today. We wanna to give a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to be here with you all. Um, I hope you guys all have a successful back to school um, if that's what you're doing with these projects. Um, and I just wanna give a big thank you again and thanks for tuning in. Bye everybody.